Warning. This podcast may contain spoilers for whatever TV show or movie is mentioned. Please listen at your own discretion. Welcome to Viewers Anonymous. What's up? I am Scooch Bronson. And I am S. Foster. And you are listening to the Viewers Anonymous podcast. What's going on with you, bro? Oh, uh, man. I can't call it. Look, this has been a week to fucking look forward to, but like we we have done like these like these two movies we done this week dude like i was so hyped up for this week man i am ready man and like like i told you earlier man it's, it's also some other stuff going on this week so that's why we had to push this episode up man you know what i'm saying old oh, lady birthday tomorrow so getting prepared for that man that's what's up man in that uh happy birthday tour you know what I'm saying? Got to show love to the family. But, um, man, listen, this this episode that we got today is, uh, this one is going to be a real good one, man, because this is one of those movies that's, you know what I'm saying, classic. You know, we talked about it a little bit on the last pod toward the end when we were doing our hype up, man. You know, it's a, it's a hood classic, of course, but. I mean, to be honest with you, man, to me, I just feel like it's just a classic in general. It captured a a very, very, um, it captured a very, you know what I'm saying, significant point of view of uh, black men in the 60s and the 70s uh, during the time of the Vietnam War, um, dealing with, you know, everything that they had to deal with, with racism, with, you know, having children and, you know, trying to have a, a family you know, trying to find a way out of, you know, saying the community that you're in and, and make a better life for yourself. And the movie we're talking about tonight or today, I said tonight, <laughs> today is um, Dead Presidents, man. Um, it's an amazing movie uh, starring Lorenz Tate, uh, Keith Washington. Um, who else is in this movie? Uh, oh, you mean Keith David? Keith David. Well, I say Keith, who is Keith Washington? I don't know who Keith Washington is. <laughs> <laughs> who the hell is Keith Washington? Nah, uh, yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Keith, I'm glad you caught that. Uh Keith David. Um, what's uh what's uh what's his name from uh Hustle and Flow? Uh Terrence Howard. You got, yeah, you got uh, Terrence Howard in. Chris Tucker. Oh man, uh, I, I can't forget Chris Tucker. Yeah, you slip, you slip it today, man. Uh, Bokeem Woodbine. Yeah, yeah. Bokeem Freddie Hall, Rodriguez. Yeah, man. Let me see, man. Um, Cliff Powell is in this movie. Yes, uh, Jennifer Lewis is in this movie. Um, let me see who else, who else, who else. Shoot, a quick appearance by Sticky uh, Fingers. Sticky. Yeah, I'm gonna say Sticky Fingers, man, is in this movie from Onyx, man. Um, but it has a, a a very very diverse cast. Um, actually, what I didn't know, I just found that out when I just looked at the uh, cast, man. Heather B is in this movie, and if you don't know who Heather B is, Heather B is a long time. Um, Hip hop aficionado. She's one of the uh, one of the co-hosts on Sway in the one of the best freestylers I've probably ever heard. Just on the casual side, um, has her own show that she does called Cooking with Heather. Or it's Happy Hour with Heather B. And then she does another show called Cooking with Heather B. But she's a very very uh, Piece to the hip hop. So I didn't even know 
she was in it. it I just seen that. So I'm learning something still. Oh yeah. That's the that's the great that's the great thing about like cinema, man, because like then you gotta look at it. It's it's a film from ninety five. So we probably if unless you listen to her music, because see a lot of people I'm more familiar with Heather B. Um I didn't really hear any of her music. I'm more familiar with her from Sway in the Morning. So, you know, I'm seeing a more mature Heather B. Like, I never really noticed her when she was young. So, I ain't know right. she was in this joint either. So, I'm now I'm going to have to go back and, like, watch mm -hmm. it again and be like, oh, man, which one is Heather <coughs> B? Yeah, I got to find it now. I'm like, <laughs> I love this movie. Like I, I think that it, 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 because it, you know, what I'm saying it, it involves a lot of different aspects of what was going on in that late '60s to early '70s era um, in our history. And you know, what I'm saying it, we got a little bit of like the the, the Black Revolution going on. We got a little bit of the Vietnam War. We got a lot of the Vietnam War. Um, we got a little bit of you know what I'm saying black people with the everyday struggles of trying to live in America you know what I'm saying and, and this will be right after the Civil Rights Act so I mean like this this is just a it's a great um it, it, it's like a, a pizza man it, it's just like a great so many different aspects of culture and history and everything and the, and the story just it, it kind of makes it all just come together, man. You um you brought up a, a very, very uh, solid point when we were off air um, last time we were talking, I think. And you were saying how you wanted to make it, well, you were saying how it's a war movie, but you didn't, because you, you had did the war uh, list on 28 Minutes or Less, and you said that you, was, you almost added it in the list because, you know what I'm saying, technically when you watch the years a war movie, it just shows you the after effects of them being at war too. I I did. I did. It was I I struggled with it because the the movies that I actually put in the top five, like it all was just simply about war. So it was hard for me to leave it out, but it was like I had to mention it because when I got to thinking about it, I was like, well, it's about a good 30 minutes, 30 to 35 minutes of roll time of the war. And mm -hmm. so I'm like, dude, like, it's, mm -hmm. it's really a sleeper war movie. And then, like you said, it shows the effects of the things that we're going to get into later in the podcast of when he got back and the things that he had to deal with. And also, you have to put in the fact that Kirby had fought in the Korean War and lost the leg and yep. Anthony... Dad, Mr. Curtis, he fought in the Korean War as well. So that's yep. something that we'll get into once we get into the middle of the podcast, once we get into it. And like what what I liked about this movie was it, it gave you like the like the best way that I could describe it is like you remember um Love and Basketball, right? I'm pretty sure you've seen Love and yeah. Basketball. So you know how when the movie started, it was like first quarter. Right. And then like, you know, probably like 30 minutes later, it's like second quarter. And then it's so third quarter and like fourth quarter. Like, <coughs> like that's what this movie gives you. It gives you like, it gives it to you in segments. Cause like the movie starts out with um, Anthony, uh, Skip and Jose, they working on, uh, on a milk truck. And so they're going around, they're delivering yep. their milk, you know, third, you know, the midnight shift, not the midnight shift, but the uh, graveyard shift, delivering milk on people's porches. And they back there talking, they just talking it up. And, you know, Skip giving, um, giving Anthony the hell about, about not smashing, um, uh, man, what's my girl's name? Uh, Juanita. Talking about how yeah. he ain't smashing Juanita yet. And then Jose, Jose get the joking around with Skip like, man, what if um he was like that what Skip was telling him that his ass was gonna end up getting drafted. And he was like, Oh man, I'm not gonna get drafted, all that type shit. And then Anthony, he says, like, yo, 
I'm actually thinking about you know joining the Marines. And they're mm-hmm. like, man, you know what you smoking, man. So they think he's pretty much like joking around, like he's not really serious about going. He was like, man, I'm gonna do something different. <laughs> <laughs> this skill set, yeah, getting your damn head blown off, yeah, that's different. <laughs> and I, was like, <laughs> I swear, dude. Hey, Chris Tucker had to ad lib that whole scene, man. Like he had to. There's no way yeah. they gave him a script of what to say when they was in the back of that truck. I mean, completely hilarious. I think he did that throughout the whole movie, though. When you when you think about it, like he, he had to because some of the stuff, yeah. like, like there's no way somebody could write that down. Like some of the things right. that he said in the way that he said them, that there is no way that they could have wrote that down. So you're probably right. There probably was a lot of ad living, or it was more of a situation yeah. where they gave him a script and then he just got the saying the shit and they're like well it sounds better the way he said it so we just gonna let mm-hmm. him go ahead and rock with that but so and then this is the crazy part so you remember when, when Anthony got off the truck right mm-hmm. and he got to Juanita's house and Delilah was at the door and he was like yeah. uh, she was like I hear your truck now do you think it's fucked up because you could tell Delilah liked him and she knew oh, that her sister was, was digging that man. Yeah, come on, she's digging all on him, man. All on him, man. It was like, like, come on, man. Like, really? And the, the crazy part was, for a minute, I thought they was twins. Mm-hmm. Not, not in real life, but they look similar, though. They really look similar. But yeah. I thought that they was twins. But then once you keep watching, you see that when they got the graduation night, her sister went and graduated. So I was like, she must be a little younger. Yeah. But like, so he sees why Nita or whatever, whatnot. So then, like, that's all they showed you for 68. Then they get to the spring of 69. And then you start to figure a little bit more about Anthony. So, like, Anthony's walking down the street and he's taking numbers. So mm-hmm. we're like, oh man, so Anthony's the number man. So he's going around getting the numbers from everybody. And then he goes in and see Kirby. And Kirby's in there with 5 0. So 5 0, they in there writing numbers, all this type shit. And so then you're starting to get the game. You're like, okay, I see what's going on here. So then that's when we introduced the <laughs> we introduced the yo boy. Look, cowboy is cowboy. your boy. Cowboy, cowboy is your boy, man. Man, hey. <laughs> I can't stand cowboy, man. Oh yeah, he, his the the role that he played was like the. Like I, it would have been tough for me to just receive that role. I like, mean, this is what I got to do for real. Like I got to be that guy. <laughs> like that guy, yeah. Like, Cowboy was a straight up. Like, yeah, that was that. I mean, he don't get me wrong. He he played the hell out of that role, man. But it's just like it's funny because watching watching going back and watching him play Cowboy after I watch Hustle and Flow, it's like he never changed the character. Like Hustle and Flow is, is like the newer version of Cowboy. But you know what? If you really think about it, Cowboy is really your boy in Get Rich or Die Trying too, though. The role that he played, yep. he took fifty. He was fifty cents manager. He, he he's kind of yep. like the same guy. So Cowboy comes you, in. Man. Oh, and then how can I not mention this? So you know my, my, the doorman that when every time you knock on the door and do yeah. the open up the peephole. Man, yeah. that's the, that's my same guy that was uh, in Players Club. Uh, he was uh, St. Louis. You remember? You oh, remember yes. Players Club, St. Louis. He was oh, the I dude that always to tried. To, he had to. Uh, he used to always try to. Uh, um, Dollar Bill would always dodge him, and mm-hmm. like, uh, and like, yeah, he he was St. Louis. Like, I was like, oh shit. So, anyway. So uh, Anthony's playing Curtis. I'm mean, Anthony's playing Curtis. His name is Anthony Curtis. He's playing Cowboy, mm-hmm. and then he ended up beating Cowboy in the pool game. So he's like, "Yo, you owe me money." So he put two dollars down. Like, man, it's just two dollars. He was like, "Yeah." He was like, "Man," and see, I know what you mean because see, he's that guy. He bet this dude straight up, and because he lost and he was a youngster, he didn't want to pay him. So he's like, "Yo, if you don't," he said, "I'm gonna tell everybody around here that." You know, don't bet with uh, Cowboy because he won't pay you. 
And so then he slammed him down and put a knife to his face, cut his face up a little bit. So then that's when you start to realize uh, that, no, okay. So let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. So Kirby takes Anthony to the back. So he gave him a lot of money, right? And yeah. then he's like, he was like, oh, Kirby, man, I appreciate that. And then he was like, man, you earned it. But mm-hmm. then he says, do you want to take a run with me? So do you think he really earned that money? Or he just gave him that money so he was uh, going to run with him? No, nah, I think I think that when he say when he said that like you earned it, I think that was like, you know what I'm saying? Like this is the one thing for me at least watching this movie, like this is still a time where people still had like OGs, you know what I'm saying? Like people still had the big well, not even big homes, but they really had like OGs. They had people that were teaching them game and teaching them how to move the streets, you know what I'm saying? Especially during that time. So I think that what Kirby did was, you know what I'm saying? Kirby was really like looking out for him. I mean, to me, it felt like like Kirby looked at him like a son. You know what I mean? Like he had him running numbers and everything else. And then not, not even that, he had him, you know, he let him hang out at the pool hall, shoot pool, you know what I'm saying? Hustle every now and then. But he knew that, I mean, I think Kirby kind of knew that like, he was going to be, you know, saying something, you know, saying to, to, to look to. He was going to be like that beacon of light for Kirby. Like, he was going to grow up and be something eventually. And so I think when Kirby had gave him that lot of money, that was just Kirby looking out. But when he was like, uh, when he was saying, like, come on, uh, do you want to take a ride with me? I think that was just Kirby way of getting a, a getaway man. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so then it was it was so funny because and then so they they go on the run and he was like you know keep it running he goes in and Kirby goes to collect you know mm-hmm. dude owes some money and you know he ain't got it so then my man I don't know if that was his girlfriend I don't know if that was his mama I don't know who the lady was but the lady well, come out with stupid the move. yeah I mean, it, it was but she came out with the pistol. And then Kirby turned around and said, you got more heart than, uh, than your daddy or something like that. And then straight bitch slapped her. <laughs> no, nah, he punched her. Hey, bitch slap, punch is all the same thing. <laughs> he fired she went down. Out. He fired off of her. <laughs> he fired off of her. And he ain't hesitate. He straight let her have it. And then this dumb dude on the ground pulls the wrong damn leg. Oh, so what? takes his that leg motherfucker off. Said, that motherfucker said, <laughs> That's the wrong leg, stupid motherfucker. <laughs> he said next time. He said next time if I had to collect, I'm gonna stick this motherfucker up your ass. <laughs> hey man, that 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 scene is funny than the motherfucker, bro. No, he laid no. the way he lay and rolled over all next to him with the <laughs> leg in his head. That shit was funny than the motherfucker, man. And then, and then they get in the car. And then he's like, man, he's like, man, that dumb motherfucker pulled the wrong leg. Because everybody in the town know I got one leg. He pulled the wrong one. And then he got <laughs> looking through his stuff. And then he was like, man, this son of a bitch. He said, I'll go kill that motherfucker. He was like, what, man? What happened? He, he said, said, he I made me lose the whole face of the red. Hey, man. That shit was hilarious, bro. Hey man, that shit was so funny. He was like, man, he made me lose a whole pack of cigarettes. He was like, man, cigarettes. Yo, I was like, man, these people are crazy, man. So then you move forward to, you know what I'm saying, they get the graduation night. And yep. that's when um Jose ended up telling Skip and Anthony, he was like, man, he said, Skip, man, you sopped me up. He was like, what you mean? He was like, man, I, they hit me with the letter, man. I got, I got drafted. And so Jose ended up getting drafted. And so the Jose ended up marrying old girl, and then Anthony went finally smashed Juanita. Yeah, and then he leaves Juanita, and then that's what we was talking about that uh, that one day. I can't remember. I think it was off air, but like yeah, they show Anthony leaving because um he fell asleep at Juanita's house, and then when um the uh they uh Juanita's sister busted in, it's like yo mama's here. She was yeah, like, she's the mom came like, well, She's here. And so they had to sneak out the back or whatever. And, and, you know, it was a pretty emotional moment that they had together, you know, before Anthony had to leave because he was leaving to go out to the war. And then um, he takes off running, running through people's backyard. And then it, you you can hear, like, guns and bombs and stuff like that going off, but it's just he's still running. 
you know, in his mm-hmm. neighborhood, and then boom, it just pops up and he's in war. And dude, when I tell you, it goes to full blown war. Like they don't, they don't. Okay, hold on. In it. Real quick, I got a question. Okay. Maybe I'm tripping, but I don't remember that scene going that way when the mom came home. Well, it was like, if you go into detail, it was like Delilah busted in, right? Right. Like, yo, mom's here. And then she's like, she's early. She's like, well, she's here. Anthony's putting on his clothes like, man, I know I shouldn't have messed around with you, man. He's like, okay, listen. So this is this is how I remember that scene. I remember that scene. And, I, and maybe, like I said, maybe I'm tripping. I remember seeing the mom coming home, right? Mm-hmm. And then she had did something with the trash cans and yeah. she got she got halfway up the stairs and said she smelled something and then she started yelling and screaming and that's when they woke up and he hopped out the window and ran off and she was yelling out the window at him as he was running no that's, man you might i think you're thinking about like boys in the hood or something maybe i am but i think you're thinking about boys in the hood Okay, I'm tripping in. That's I thought so. I'm gonna say because I remember I remember a scene like that, but I got the movies mixed up. Okay, but cool, cool. but yeah, but she did go outside to put something in the trash. But while yeah, that's when they was hiding. That, they was hiding behind the yeah. Uh, garage. Yeah. Okay. All right. Exactly. Yeah. And um, and so then they like, dude, it goes. It don't sneak you in. It don't creep you in. It go full blown war. Bombs going yep. off. Dudes running. And like it goes straight into it, and that's when we get the, the quick cameo from Sticky Fingers. He mm-hmm. dies in less than two minutes. <laughs> like, yeah, as soon as they get to him, he on the ground bloody. Yeah, as soon as they get, because actually they the uh, the mad dude was running with Sticky Fingers on his shoulder. Yeah, and he, and laid him on the ground, and so then then that's when we get the craziest part. So they ask for an airstrike. So airstrike comes. And so the commander dude is like, yo, you know, let's go to uh something point or something. And and uh Cleo, like, yo, let's go do recon. Let's go, they get mm-hmm. important papers in there, all this type of stuff. So then they go in and do that's why I was talking about when I was like the makeup and stuff was so great in this movie, because yeah, that when they going in, there's bodies on the ground, like torsos gone, all this shit. Yep. But the bodies are missing limbs. Yeah, missing limbs, burnt halfway. Some of them wasn't all the way dead. Like, yeah, that was, it was crazy. It was crazy. And I was just so amazed, like, because there was one scene where I, I, I'd never really noticed it before, but, like, the camera was going, it was going kind of slow, and it was smoke coming out of a dead body on the ground. I'm like, yeah. yo, like, this is crazy. And so they dig digging through the stuff. You know, Anthony digging through a bag. He found a map, all this type of stuff. And the uh, commander guy found a commander uh, belt, and so like that's mm-hmm. like a, a like a prize. That's like that's like a gold medal to them. They're like, hey, we got a commander. I got a commander belt. Yeah, like, Cleo, like the- yeah. Like he hit the jackpot. He like Cleo. We've been both looking for one of these since '66. Now it's '71 at this time, mm-hmm. and so Cleo is fucking mad <laughs> because because he didn't get to get one of the belts. So this motherfucker goes right. up to a dead body, mm. leaning up against the tree, three straight strikes and takes her head off. And not only do he just take this head, this motherfucker sits down Indian style <laughs> and put the head on and his he lap. Sits that motherfucker on his lap, man. I'm like, that was the craziest yo. part of that movie. No, I take that back. That was the second craziest part of that movie. And I'm sitting here, and then, and then like, so then my, my commander guy said, yo, Cleo, what you doing? He said, I'm just like you, sir. Just getting the souvenir. <laughs> 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 hey, yo, let me, real quick. Bo King Woodbine did a great fucking job playing that role, man. Like, you could tell, like, he he did some kind of research or something, because the way that, the way that they showed him, like, being affected in that whole environment of war, like they did a great fucking job. I mean, he did a great fucking job of portraying that. Oh yeah, for, for sure, for sure. Even 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 when he got back, like he, mm-hmm. he like he was just a different. We'll, we'll get that when we get that. But he was a totally different person. His mannerisms mm-hmm. was different, and all that stuff when he got back. 
And so the commander's like, yo, Cleo, what you doing? He says, he says, are you hungry or something? <laughs> it's like, what the fuck kind of question is that? He chops his head off. <laughs> you can't, ain't no meat on no head. Like, what you mean is you hungry or something? So then, um, right. and so he's like, all right, well, you know, we heading out. And then, <laughs> And then my man, and then my man Skip say, "Oh, that's all he gonna say. <laughs> like he ain't gonna say nothing." Else. <laughs> and so then they get to uh, when they get back, and Skip and Anthony that they're, they're talking shit about Cleo, and then they go into this bar, and then so him and Skip sitting down talking, and he was like, "Yo," he asked him about Juanita or whatnot. He was like, "Man, I fucked around and got her pregnant before I left." And he was like, "Man, you got a picture of your little girl." He's like, "Yeah, but I can't look at her." And so he's like, man, why not? He was like, when you out here, he was like, you, if you got something to lose like that, you could die over some shit like that. So what Anthony, what he did with his psyche was, and I can understand somebody doing that. Like, yeah, you want to keep in touch with your family and all of that type stuff. But at the same time, if you think so much about like the, the outside world, why are you in that world? You like you really can die. Yeah, you get distracted, yeah. really distracted. So he tried to keep it to where, like, he stopped write, writing Juanita. You know, it seemed like he he really never said anything about his parents. Like, really, the only person he kept in touch with was Kirby the whole time that he was there. Mm-hmm. So then you get to where it's the crazy. Now, this might be the part that you're talking about that's the craziest. So then they um they're going out regular day and so they sitting there game planning and all that type stuff and they was talking because they was like yo Cleo like you gotta get rid of that head yo <laughs> like, like, like yo, that head smell, he said that head smell like a sack of shit <laughs> and they was like man you gotta get rid of that head so they, they, they pull a vote they're like yo like I vote for uh, to get them to get rid of it and then like skip you know you had to put in his two words he's like man you need to get rid of that head man that thing smell like shit man yeah, so, uh, that's my he favorite like, part. He's like, "Hey man, you need to get rid of that head. That thing smells like shit." <laughs> that's my shit, bro. And then, <laughs> and then he was like, "Man, he said not one of us got a splinter since I had this head." And he was mm-hmm. like, uh, "And he's like, look, he's like, look." And then the uh, the doc dude was like, "Yo, that's a, a safety hazard, all this type shit." He was like, "Yo, doc, you don't know shit. <laughs> you <laughs> the doc, you don't know shit." <laughs> and, so then, and so then they finally convinced him to, uh, to, to you know, put the head up. So he dig a hole, put the head in it, and he goes back. And he was like, he was like, man, everything's about to go to shit now. He's like, I just buried our good luck. And so then they're like, yo, where my man at? And they was like, he went to take a shit. They were like, well, why didn't you go with him? He was like, man, you know he don't like people around him when he take a shit. And like, how long he's been gone? And, you know, so they went to go look for him, and then they find this motherfucker. Gutted out, damn intestines mm. on the outside. Not mm. only is his intestines on the outside, they cut this motherfucker dick and balls off and put them in his mouth. I'm like, yo, this shit got like it is beyond real at this point. Like beyond real at this point. I'm like, yeah, like this is this, like this is crazy. And that's why I say like it was so hard not to put this in that because like like dude this this movie like it don't just give you a generic like war scene okay for instance right Forrest Gump mm-hmm. Forrest Gump went into the war mm-hmm. all you really remember is that he said something bit me <laughs> he got shot and Lieutenant Dan lost his leg and Lieutenant Dan lost his leg and and Bubba and they and they were trying to tell Bubba Gump to put his lip in because he's gonna get caught by a damn fish net or some shit mm-hmm. <laughs> But my point is, like, though the war scene in Forrest Gump wasn't as graphic as this right. was. This was very graphic. So then um, they, they try to patch him up as much as they can. They give him some uh, some morphine. And then Anthony's like, yo, he's like, if you need more, I got some. He's like, another one of those would kill him. And so they go and they're waiting for the med uh, chopper to come. And he's looking at Anthony like, yo, like, kill me. And Anthony's like, oh, man, you're going to be all right. He was like, yo, I can't go home like this. Mm-hmm. Feel me? Dude, when I tell you, if I felt anybody, I felt that dude more than anybody. 
<laughs> Hell yeah. send me, dude, don't send me home with no man. dick, man. Like, no. Word. Like, man, kill me right now. I like, know, kill me right and now. Man, you can't even you can't even tell that story how you want to tell it for real. Like, you gotta you gotta fabricate a whole new story now because that ain't the the story that happened ain't the story you want to tell your grandkids. Oh no, you ain't gonna tell them that. I mean, you gonna do like look, they just cut like, it off. They you ain't gonna tell them was, to put it in your mouth. Yeah, like I was I was fighting a, I was fighting a big Kong and they gutted me and shoved my shit in my mouth. Like, no, nah, no, no, nah, you can't, can't do that. No, no, like so. I I felt that dude. I felt that dude more than anybody, man. So Anthony gave him his yeah. um, more. So he went out, and so then you get to the, the pretty much like the last war scene. Like they got in one last shootout, and so um, uh, we got to a point where they get in, they run into an ambush. And the crazy part was like, man, the uh the Vietcom dude, man, they bullets looked like alien bullets, man. Them bitches was green. That shit was crazy as fuck. And so uh they're they're shooting back and forth. Yeah, and they, it, it was they was shooting that they was shooting that 50 cal. Man, that was wild. And so then the lieutenant yeah. dude is like, yo, skip, cover me. And Skip was like, he was never made out for it. Like he mm-hmm. that wasn't the type of person that he was. Like like he said when he was back at home, he a pimp. You know what I'm saying? He said his great yeah. great great grandfather was a pimp when when they was had the slaves <laughs> like the Scott point. So Skip yeah. Skip wasn't cut out for this, and like Skip got into a lot of drugs while he was over there, so Skip wasn't ready for it. So the dude say cover me. Skip is there. <laughs> he's covering up <laughs> like he covering his head up, mm-hmm. and then my sergeant dude gets. You know what I'm saying he takes by eight in the chest, and man. So we're gonna we're gonna get back to that because that's going to be important toward the end of the movie. So then they ended up like really after that, Skip went home, and so like they took a whole bunch of pictures and stuff to mm-hmm. Skip go home. And then I think it was yeah two more years. It was two more years, and then Anthony went home. So then that's pretty much the end of the war stuff. So Anthony's on his way home. Anthony's in the. Uh, in the cab, he looks over, he sees Skip. So he got, jumps out and like, you know, you know, stand up, soldier, and Skip is high as fuck. Well, Skip, I don't know, hey, Skip has some good hair. Yeah, but he out of it. Like, out of it, but on, on, on the mm-hmm. bench on the corner stove. Like, out like a light. And then we introduced the cowboy again. <laughs> and oh, my God. The cowboy eating some death. <laughs> eating some wings. This motherfucker got Wing sauce all over his face, like, <laughs> like mm-hmm. Terrence Howard went playing around with them wings, but like he was really eating them shit. That wasn't acting. That was some shit. Eating some wings. And so he's like, I, man, he's he, like, he man, eating that motherfucker, man. Oh yeah. And so he's like, man, he said, like, look at you. He said, would you some some kind of sergeant and shit? He was like, man, he keep that uniform on. He gonna get all the pussy in the hood. And so, uh, so Anthony, yeah, ended up. Oh, oh man, I cannot believe. Oh, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot. This this has to be mentioned. So when he left, no, before he um went to the uh, graduation dance, well, the graduation party or whatever. I cannot believe I forgot to mention this. So he's at home with his family, mm-hmm. with his brother, which is played by Isaiah Washington. And um, yep. So oh, I got, yep, Isaiah Washington was in this too. Yeah, and so they're sitting there eating, and I was there watching talking about how he's going to uh, I don't know if it was uh, like pre med or basically he was going to get his master's or something like he graduated, yeah, college. he had just, he had just got out of college, yeah, well, and he was going into you know getting like another degree. And he's like, Yeah, mm-hmm. you go to city college, you could be like me, and Anthony, like, oh, yeah, like you, right? And so then her, his mama, which is Jennifer Lewis, you know, Miss Curtis is like, uh, She's like, yeah, my mom would be so proud to see that I got two uh, kids uh, to graduate college. So he looks up kind of funny. And um, so then she's like, so what you planning on majoring in? And he says under his breath, no, Marines. And she's like, uh, what, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> he said that shit low as hell. And then he was like, yeah. oh, I plan on, he's like, I plan on joining the Marines. And she was like, why you want to mess up your life like that? And he was like, it's my life. He's like, I don't know why everybody got the long faces and all that type stuff. And the interesting person in this whole film is his dad. 
yeah. because his dad, he was always quiet. He never said much, but when he did say something, it was important. Even though all mm-hmm. he said was, because Curtis, look, well, Anthony looked at him, it's like, Dad, you know, I just want to, you know, join a Marine like you. He was like, you told me the Marine made a man out of you. And it's just like, mm-hmm. he was just sitting there. I, and all he said was, I'll talk to him. That's all he said. And like, even though it was it was little, but it was like at the same time, you could tell that Anthony really looked up to his dad. And like, yeah. he didn't really want to be anything like his brother, but he really looked up to his dad. So I thought that that was important. And I also would get back to, because there's another scene, even though his dad was only in two scenes, it was two big scenes. So mm-hmm. to get back to it, Cowboy, Cowboy is out there saying he's going to get out of pussy and keep that suit on because he still had all his Marine stuff on. So him and Skip is walking home. Well, Skip is walking Anthony home. And so Anthony, they're walking and talking. And uh, then they get on the subject of, he's like, man, you all right? He was like, you don't need no money or nothing? He was like, man, I'm good. He was like, man, I got this check coming in every month. I got this check coming in every month. He was mm-hmm. like, man, he was like, I got full medical. He was like, all I got to do is wake up and go to the mailbox. And he was like, man, how did you pull full medical? And he was like, yo, was like, man, some shit got into me over there. And yeah. that takes us into that whole fucking experience of Agent Orange. Yep. Because a lot of damn um, veterans got mm-hmm. fucked up with that damn Agent, Agent Orange because what the, what the government did was they dropped all of these chemicals. Yeah, all throughout Vietnam, not even thinking about we had our own damn soldiers out there as well. Mm-hmm. And that's why when you look at a lot of these, a lot of these Vietnamese people, a lot of their babies was born with disformities and shit. Yep. And see, that's just another thing that shows you, like America, man. Like even though we live here and all this shit, like everybody got their flaws, every country got their flaws, but we one of the most fucked up countries ever. Like yeah. to do what we did to those Vietnam people. And not only did we just do it to them, we did it to our own people as well. Mm-hmm. And so like a lot of dudes ended up coming down with Agent Orange and then Anthony looked at him and he was like, man, it ain't the heroin. He's like the heroin never did nothing to me like this. And he yeah. was just like, man, some shit got into me while I was over there. Okay, so he was like, all right, man. Um, so he ended up, they was talking about Jose because Jose had, he had got out early <laughs> because he got injured. He like blew up his hand, but he just, basically had like a bunch of severe burns on his hand. And mm-hmm. so um, so Anthony goes to the house eating like he just served a beer, but like he was eating like <laughs> he was eating okay, like so this is, it wasn't that ain't that ain't I know I see, I know what you was talking about. You talking about when uh when he first got back. So the reason that he was eating like that is because um anytime you like anytime you're in the military they, they make you eat that way because, especially when you're in a situation at war, you eat fast just in case some shit happens. So, oh, like, yeah. say if, you know what I'm saying, like, say if, you know what I'm saying, it, it's, they call it chow time. So, say it's chow, y'all at the, you know what I'm saying, at the chow hall or whatever y'all eat, and, and somebody attacked the base. You got to hurry up and eat that shit and then get to where you got to go, you know what I'm saying, so you can, you know what I mean, go defend, you know what I'm saying, the, the base or whatever. But um, real quick thing, though, both of my grandfathers served in Vietnam, and um, my mom's dad, he was affected by Agent Orange. Oh, so you know the personal effects of it. Yeah, yeah. That's why, that's another reason, that's another reason why I dug this movie so much, man, because, you know what I'm saying, they kind of hit home knowing the stories and all that that my grandfather used to talk about. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I'm pretty sure you could appreciate a lot. Of, I mean, even though they didn't get into the Agent Orange shit, right. you would appreciate like, shit like uh, uh, Platoon. Because, yeah. like, the Platoon gave you a, a, a real sense of it, too, with Oliver Stone being in that war as well. Mm-hmm. And basically, mm-hmm. basically, from what Oliver Stone said was, like, what you seen was pretty much, like, what it was. Like, yeah. so, like the platoon that he was with, he's just showing you a picture of the shit that he dealt with while he was there. Just so, like uh, in the in the one scene of um, when they was walking and everything and Anthony picked up the paper that said, black man go home, this ain't your war. Yeah. That's, a, that's not the actual paper, but it was actual like flyers and shit being put up and thrown around like that to black people to let them know like, yo, we don't got beef with y'all. 
like it's a it's a lot of situations to where like the Vietnam didn't have beef with black people. It's a lot of it's a couple of black people that still live over in Vietnam. Dude, dude, it was the same way for World War Two. Yeah. Like they was telling them we ain't got no issues with y'all. Mm-hmm. And, but this is the thing, it ain't just black people. There's a lot of white people that still live over in Vietnam as well. Yeah. Because like when you watch um that Ken Barnes um Vietnam war that um that was on PBS, like after the whole effects of what ended up happening, America went back and rebuilt the damn country. And mm-hmm. when they went back and rebuilt it, a lot of them motherfuckers stayed over there. But then yeah. at the same time, a lot of these motherfuckers had babies over there too. That's so true. it was it was a whole mixture of a whole bunch of different shit of reasonings for some people to go back and stay and all types of stuff like that. So yeah, that war was 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 pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. But like you were saying, like and I mean, I was saying that to be funny, but like he was eating like that. And then another thing, like when the last time he had really a good a real home, yeah, some real food yeah yeah. You know, because they're eating shit out of, of a can. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And um, so then her mom, you know, she, like, like this is the thing. It's like, she has to realize, like, yo, ease into it. Like, she's hitting this dude with a whole bunch yeah. of questions. And it's like, yo, like, just, just chill. And that's another thing. Like, the dad, like, his mom is, like, bomb rushing him with all of these questions about baby what you know what happened yep. over there you know when you're not talking and like he does this thing like with his hands like you know like chill yeah like, and like i down. said like his dad yeah like his dad like even though he didn't say much it's like everything was like you know so he put up his hand like trying to tell her to like you know chill with the questions and so she asked him a question and he's like you know just had to do you know a lot of killing well no she was like did you get any bad habits he was, he was like, nah, you know, I just did a lot of killing. And then she was like, um, she asked him about, uh, and she was like, yeah, that's what I mean by those bad habits. Did you pick up anything else? And she was like, a lot of them dudes got on drugs while they was over there. And he was like, mom, mm-hmm. I was a part of a very special unit. He was like, I could not be doing no drugs, you know, being in the unit that I was in. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, his dad, he... <laughs> He shifted the whole conversation by saying, "Oh, so you want some more of these greens?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, and, and that's why I say, like, he didn't say much, but it was like it was so important because he knew he knew Anthony. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, and he, he also understood that that war too. Yeah, and he understood what he was going through. So he was like, "The best thing to do, especially right now, would you just get back?" You know, you have a little privacy. You don't need to be bombarded with questions. Mm-hmm. When you when you're ready to talk about it, you'll talk about it. Because I'm pretty sure that same thing probably happened with him when he yep. first got back. So then Anthony pops back up at the pool hall. You know what I'm saying? With the with the hat on. He he he, uh, he, he, he Mr. Smooth in this one. Yeah, he, he Ooh, does, dude. He's Mr. Smooth. Oh, wasn't even walking, he was gliding. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, I swear he was gliding. Mm-hmm. So he's gliding, you know what I'm saying? He was like, what's up, man? I ain't seen you in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and so he rolls back. And then, uh, like I said, go to the door, man. My man is uh, St. Louis in Players Club. And uh, so he opens up the door. And then and he, was like, he was like, hey, chump. And then Kirby a little bit, who is that? Man, that sound like somebody. And so then Kirby comes up and talk to him. And so then he asked Kirby, like, yo, He's like, man, I can't find a job nowhere, man. He's like, man, I thought that maybe I could run numbers for you like we used to. And he was like, man, I got out of that business. He was like, you know, the police ran me out. And he was like, man, how, he was like, man, you used to pay them. He was like, man, I'm gonna put more of their kids through college. Then mm-hmm. uh, I forgot what he compared it to, but he was like, he was done doing that. So he was like, I got out of it. And he was like, he asked him for a job. And he was like, yo, I, this place never made much money. He was like, you know, I do a little bit of this or that, you know, to get by. But so basically he couldn't help Anthony out as far as getting a job. And so then Anthony goes and he goes to this butcher shop and end up getting a job at the butcher shop. But like at the same time, what that shows you is you go, you serve your country, you do all this stuff, and then you get back. They pretty much have no programs to help you out. Yep. They don't really have no job that's like 
at least to the point where it's like, yo, we got so many dudes getting sent home every year. Uh Like we, that they they could have put something in place where it's like where you can hold positions for these. He could have been getting a check. He could have been. It's all kind of shit, man. Yeah, it's all kind of stuff. And the only reason uh, Skip was getting a check, I mean, you don't want to be the way he was. I mean, you you seen it exactly. Like he was he was dealing with a lot. Not only was he was he 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 was dealing with P um PTSD. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like he was never made out for it, so he he wasn't just taking drugs for the PTSD. He also was taking drugs from, like he was having the shakes and all this type of shit. So he was just using those drugs for an escape. And it's like, do you want to be like that, just for mm-hmm. a free check? I don't know if I want that check that way. Right. And so he ended up getting a job at the butcher shop, and my man asked him, "Was he afraid of blood?" And he was like, "Man, that's all I've been seeing for about the last four or five years." Mm-hmm. And so, you know, getting a job there. And what I liked about the movie was, now some people might say it's fucked up, but he waited until he got a job before he mm-hmm. went to see why Nita in the baby. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought that was, I thought that was very smart and I liked the way they did that because yeah. at least he could be able to go to why and be like, yo, I got a job, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna be able, you know, to start helping with my daughter because I think that it would have been a little different if he just went straight to Juanita and went to see his daughter, and he and they had nothing to show for it. Yeah, yeah, nothing to bring to the table, nothing like that. So then he um he gets the job and then he goes to see Juanita and then Delilah's there, mm. and then Delilah done rolled up. <laughs> She's Delilah, still digging her. She's still digging her. Still digging him, but she she not turn revolutionary on you, mm-hmm. and so he's like, so she 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 hit him like straight with it, like yo, like welcome to the revolution and all this type of shit. He was like, yo, he was like, man, you could at least hit me with a hey, hello, how you doing? And then mm-hmm. she goes, okay, now, now, all right, now wrong or not wrong, she go in and just straight kiss my man on the lips though. It's not wrong. I was, never <laughs> mad at, I was never mad at Delilah. She went for what she wanted, and that's that's what a woman does. A woman goes, a real woman goes for what they want. I salute Delilah. Hey, Delilah was going in, but like mm-hmm. she didn't care. She ain't care nothing about her sister. She like, ain't she ain't care about her sister or her niece. No, she didn't give a damn. She was like, hey, I'm trying <laughs> to get in with Curtis, but like yes, sir. But she's still digging Curtis. And so then, like, she's getting on him about, like, you know, did they brainwash you while you were there and all this type of stuff. Mm-hmm. So basically, she went into the whole, she went whole Black Panther mode. Like, yep. she turned into a straight revolutionary, you know, from graduating school and a lot of things that was going on around that time. Like, for the people that don't know, like, that was a, a very crucial time period for, especially while he was gone and, like, in the time that he left. Like, it was a mm-hmm. real crucial time where the Black Panthers was really influencing the neighborhoods at that mm-hmm. time. Like, you know, Uncle Washington tells a lot of stories about a lot of the things that he saw that the Black Panthers did and all of that type of stuff. So yeah. and so he was then, in New York, so so you know, you know how far that reach was. The fact that he was in New York and it, it, it was out there, it was in Philly, it was in Chicago. Like they was they was really doing something major. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. I ain't mad at it at all. And um, so then he sees his child for the first time. And Juanita comes in, sees his child for the first time. So she goes to, you know, hug her dad and all the type of stuff. So they're riding down the road. And then they pull up to where uh, Juanita's staying. And then we introduce, this, this is your boy, man. Cut. Cut is your boy, man. Cuddy, man. Listen, Cuddy's a dirty motherfucker, man. Cuddy is, Cuddy is who Skip was supposed to be, man. That's what Skip was aspiring <laughs> to be. It was cut. You ain't like. <laughs> I think I ain't never think about it that way. One thing that I didn't like about Cuddy, man, I hated the way he was eating that sucker, man. That shit was pissing me off. Yeah, he wasn't was, even he, eating the sucker. And then, like he, like he was eating it, like it's like he was. Like, to me, honestly, it's like he was trying to attract the dude. <laughs> like the yes. way he was eating it. <laughs> like either put it in your mouth or don't, man. You can't keep doing it. You, you can't keep doing that, man. 
Yeah, and then like he was wrapped his lips around it funny. I was yeah, just he like, was oh no, the man. Flavor off the sucker, man. That shit was pissing me off. That's a waste of a sucker. <laughs> <laughs> shit, eat the goddamn sucker, man. And so, like, what was so wrong about him was the fact of I'm pretty sure what I need to told him about Anthony. Oh, so well, obviously, when when he seen Anthony in the car, he had to know automatically that's got to be. Mm-hmm. That little girl's kid. I mean, that little girl dad. Yeah. And so he was like, it didn't, but this is what pissed me off about, about the most in this scene was he was like, yo, he was like, what's up, why did what up, what not? And then he was like, uh, how baby girl doing? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Hold up. And then Curtis looking like Anthony was like, what the fuck? And then no, this is what pissed me off though. He's like, oh, I came by earlier, but you weren't here. And she was like, oh, yeah, I had to go to such a set. He was like, oh, yeah, I forgot. Today's Sunday. I'm like, yo. <laughs> like, yo, that, that's, that's fucked up, man. He know he was wrong for that. He knew and what then, he was doing. And then right when she about to introduce Anthony, this nigga peel off in the caddy. He get too scared. He don't even, he don't even say bye. Nothing. And I'm like, man, yo, was crazy, man. you didn't you didn't have to sit there and tell them how you knew the whole schedule and shit. Like, man. You know? But this is the thing, though. This is the thing. And yo, is that dirty you. making? It kind of is. It kind of is because, it, and it's also, not only is it dirty making, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's cop blocking. Because he knew and that shit was going to fuck the mood up. Yeah, he was player hating, too. Oh, yeah. He definitely was doing that because he he was figuring like, oh, he's probably gonna peel out after this because he's gonna know that I was smashing that while he was gone. Yeah, and, but man. this is the thing though. But this is the thing though. I put some of that blame on Anthony because when they was laying in the bed before he left, she was mm-hmm. like, "Are you gonna marry me when you come back?" And he was like, "You know, what if I get hurt out there? I don't want you to wait on me." Yeah. So then he tells her not to wait on him, right? But then. When they get into the uh, apartment, and he's like, oh, well, you know, I think I should go. And she was like, why? He's like, oh, I think I should go. She was like, okay, I used to mess around with Cuddy. She was like, is that what you want to hear? He was like, oh, my man made that real clear. And she was like, well, I mean, you act like you didn't want me. Mm -hmm. Like You start writing me and all this type of stuff. Like, what do you expect to do? You can't be mad when you say don't wait on me, and then you start writing her. And then she starts smashing somebody else. Fuck that. You don't know I could have been dead out there. You don't know why I quit writing you. I don't hear that shit. She was she knew she was wrong. Man, hey, he, he should have locked it down. <laughs> she she was trying to tell him to, and he didn't he didn't want to. Yeah. So um, yeah, he missed the ball on that one. So then she ended up convincing him to stay. And then um, so then um some time go by. Mm-hmm. And she's pregnant. Again. And this is the thing. Like, so he's sitting there, and and he pretty much formed a relationship with the dude. I think it was Sal. That's what his name was. It was Sal. Yeah, Sal, Sal was the job. Yeah, at the job. And yeah. so um, then he's sitting there eating, you know, feeding feeding the baby some food, and you know, he sit her down, and then um, Juanita comes over. He rolls to storm and say, "I'm a will us a boy." Mm-hmm. And he was like, Anthony Jr. And she was like, well, can you will yourself a better job? I'm like, yo, like. Had to, just had to mess the mood up. Everything was going whole- good. He feeding the baby. He all happy and shit. Talking about spoiling the baby and all that. And you hit him with a, can you will yourself a better man. job? I'm like, damn. I'm like, man, you see my man. He, he was struggling to get that job. OK, now see, this is the part. This is the part that I didn't like, right? This is this scene. This scene really, I ain't gonna say it irked me, but it kind of hurt me because it was like, you know what I'm saying? My man, my man went to, you know, he went off the war, he came back, and it wasn't like, you know what I'm saying? He came back and was a fucking bum. The first thing he did when he came back was get a fucking job. That was yep. the deep, that was the first, he didn't even go see his kid yet. He went to go try to get. A, a life. He went to go try to, to earn a living, and the fact that he got a constant job, he got a, a, a consistent job. You know what I'm saying? He there for his child, man. He doing everything that he's supposed to do. He's not a deadbeat father. 
He's not out here cheating on you with these hoes. Like he's not doing none of that. He doing, he taking care of all of his responsibilities. And you got the nerve to complain and say, can you will yourself a better job? All because Cuddy been throwing you hundreds? And then, and then no, and then she wasn't finished up. Then not only did she say, will yourself another job, she hits him with, this ain't no, you don't get no free meals like you did when you was in the army. Oh like, yeah, that, that shit was foul. I'm like, really, yo. Like he was like, man, I had to work for every fucking thing out there when I was in the mm -hmm. army. Like it wasn't no free meals and all this type stuff. And so then, and then she asked Sam that he drinks too much and all of this type of shit. So she's getting on him about that. Then this dude is having um, dreams, cold sweat. This motherfucker seeing people dying. Nightmares, dreams. nightmares, man. Yeah, man, having bad nightmares. And, and then and she that shit is real. Yeah, that, that shit is really real. real. My, uh, my great grandfather, man, all the way up until he passed, he would have, he would wake up in cold sweats and have nightmares. And he, I think he was in World War Two. Yeah, like, dude, it's, it's crazy. And then she was kind of like, I don't know if I would call it making fun of him, but she was kind of like, oh, see, that's that why I told you you need to stop drinking something because he got out of the bed. Mm -hmm. And like, he was uh, looking out the window and she was see, I told you you need to stop drinking so much and all this type of shit. That's like, what do you mean drinking? Man, it, only if she knew, only if she knew a quarter of what he was going through over there. Exactly. Like, so, so then he goes, he goes down and he's talking to Kirby and, um, and, um, Jose's there. And so they're talking and like him and like, they're all riding down the road and Kirby's car playing one of the illest, like, one of the I said I said this from 28 minutes or less podcast when we did it mm -hmm. one of the illest intros to a song they riding down the road and they playing the intro to the sound of love by Isaac Hayes yeah it's like it's it's just so much it, it's just great so then they're talking about so the government like you know so many times a month or however what it was they take money Send it down to Washington to just mm -hmm. burn it. Yep. So they're like, what the fuck? They were like, we can't even get a job and the government is just taking money and they're just burning it. So they come up with this plan. They're like, yo, like we need to rob this armored truck of this money. It's unmarked money that they're about to take to go burn. So let's go, you know, get this or whatever. So then they bring Skip along. So they all game planning. And they're trying to figure out the game plan of how they're going to rob this truck. And so then when, when they leave, well, no, before they start game plan, they were just talking about doing it. So mm -hmm. then Anthony is, he goes, so the next day, it must have been the next day, I'm not sure if it was the next day, but then the, the next scene, Sal pulls Anthony to the back and like, yo, uh, I got to close down the shop. Cause well, he yeah. brought him to the back and he was like, yo, Sal, man, I got a lot more meat to cut. He was like, you know, like what you need? He was like, mm -hmm. man, they're closing down the shop. He's like, well, I'm closing the shop. He was like, what you mean? He was like, I didn't say nothing earlier because I thought that, you know, more money would come in. Mm -hmm. So I, and look, I, I get what I get Sal point because you don't want to tell him, yo, like we, we, we possibly could be going out of business. Right. You know, and then everything ended up being fine. So Sal, kind of waited to the last minute to see if they could weather the storm. It, it, it's, it, it's, it is kind of messed up. And then, I, like, I see Sal's point. Yeah. And I also get why Curtis wasn't, like, flipping out. Because it's like, mm -hmm. like, Sal knew about it, but he was thought that they could make it through. So he ended up giving him a whole ton of meat to take home. And like on his way home, he ended up um, he ended up running into Cuddy again. No. So he's going up the steps. Cuddy's coming down the steps. And like I said, he always got these little shiesty things to say. Like everything mm -hmm. is like smart. Like you said, dirty mac. So he's like, mackin', man. bring it home the groceries like a real man, you know. And and then um, 
he was like, yo, like, what the fuck you doing here? He was like, oh, you know, I came to see baby girl, whatever, whatnot. And um, so then, like, Cuddy tried to tell him, like, yo, I'll take care of your family while you were gone. Nah, nah, nah. And if you ever need a job, or if you, know, you ever need some money, you know, let me know and all this type of stuff. He was mm-hmm. like, man, fuck you type shit. So then Cuddy, now, boom, punched his mother. He now fell down the steps. And then he so dropped all the goddamn gross. All the meat on the ground. Damn, I mean, he was wrapped up individually, but, but, Damn. and then he pulled the gun on Anthony, and it's like, dude, <laughs> did you forget <laughs> what this motherfucker was <laughs> for like mm-hmm. six years? <laughs> that damn mm-hmm. gun didn't scare him, man. So he put the gun, and then what's fucked up, man? He gonna tell him to try to open your mouth, open that nigga. <laughs> yeah, oh uh, man. I was like, man, come on, Tomorrow, don't ever bite the hand that feeds you. And I'm like, motherfucker, I got a job. What you talking right. about? <laughs> like, you, you just like, you just tore up mama goddamn groceries, motherfucker. Yeah. And so then he goes upstairs, and then him and Juanita get into it. And like, my thing with Juanita, yo, like this is it, yo. You can't be taking no money man. from a pimp you used to fuck around with. When your damn baby daddy is living with you at the house, man. No, this is just this is just a this is just a, a unwritten rule. Like anytime you any any woman, you never take money from another man when you have a man. If you are not single, you cannot take money from another man unless he is your father. Yo, Plain why need to really turn? Why well, Nita turned out to be a, she turned out to be an asshole, man. That like, she really did. That's like, why. That's because why he should have messed with Delilah, man. And he he ended up he ended up leaving her after that. Cause well, I mean, he, now now like I say, I, I I would never say anybody is okay with abusing a woman because mm-hmm. it's always wrong. There's nothing right about it. But on a side note, <laughs> you don't run up on a dude. <laughs> Hell no. Who was been in a shot war. The last six years. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. That was in a war. He dealt with a whole bunch of shit. This dude having night sweats. He, and I'm pretty sure he always think because it seemed like he like they're always on defense, especially mm-hmm. when they just recently left a war. And you run up on him and he grabbed their ass by her neck, but he was shaking the Man, shit out of her. He almost broke her shit. <laughs> and she was pregnant. <laughs> yeah. So, so then he ended up leaving, and then he goes to because when he goes to uh, a Delilah. Black Panther meet. Yep. Yeah, he goes to Delilah. Delilah was uh, she was ahead of the the Panther meeting that they was going through, and so then he got to telling Delilah about the robbery. That, well, he told her that he was done with a sister. And I'm pretty sure she mm-hmm. was loving that. Hell and then yeah. he was like, he got to telling her about the plan that they come up with. So then you get the whole crew together. You get Delala, Kirby, Skip, Jose, mm-hmm. Anthony. They all sitting there. And so they're going through the game plan. They're going through the blueprint, how they're going to do it. And they're like, yo, I think we need another man. Mm-hmm. And they was <laughs> and Skip like, man, we don't need another man. Said, man, what you put in there ad in the paper? They're <laughs> 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 like, we don't need another man. And so then they were like, man, do you know somebody? And then that's when we get back. To Cleo. Mm-hmm. And like I told you, Cleo is a completely, totally different person again. Like, he a pastor now? Man, Bokeem Woodbine played the hell out of this role, dude. I told because you. Because Cleo was a straight up nut. Like he was like, th- like this dude cut a, a damn dude head off and walked around with his book bag. And then you go down and now he's preaching. Got his mm-hmm. whole congregation. And like even the way he's talking, I know pastors talk a little different when they're preaching, but like, so he's sitting there preaching and all this type of stuff. He got the glasses on. And my, the funniest part is when he was like, he was like, oh, you know, I have sin. He was like, you all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> 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 like, what the hell is he doing, man? That shit was so funny when he said that. And so then him and Anthony is sitting in church. Now they can mm-hmm. leave, go to a diner. They can sit on the on the steps of the church. Nope. <laughs> they in the church. <laughs> He's Talk telling about him about the damn 
Tell them about the rivalry in the church. <laughs> <laughs> and so then, like, they sitting there talking about the rivalry. And so he ended up getting in, and he was saying it. And that's why I say, remember that this part was important. When the sergeant dude told Skip, back when they was in the war, he was like, Skip, cover me. And Skip was covering mm -hmm. up himself, and sergeant dude got shot. And so to fast forward back, Anthony and Cleo talking, and he's like, yo, he was like, you, you trust Skip? And he was like, yeah, I trust Skip in my life. He was like, well, you remember back in the war, he froze up. And he was mm -hmm. like, look, he was like, I trust Skip with my life. Skip is in. Like, Skip is not out. And so then they come up with the plan. Best costumes ever. This is the best face yeah. paint you're ever going to see in your life. Like, it was, yeah. it, was, it, was, it, was, it was so great. It was so great. So they come up with the plan of how they was going to do it. You know, Anthony's leading the charge. And so the robbery, that's the thing about a movie. If if you plan a robbery and you watching a movie and the and the robbery goes right, it's not that entertaining. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not yeah, entertaining when, when the robbery goes yeah, right. Like something has to go wrong. And so it started out wrong mm -hmm. right from the beginning. So everybody's standing in the spots where they're supposed to be. And then all of a sudden, this black cop just strolls up. Walking up the street at fucking four o'clock in the morning, <laughs> like, like this. and so then he walks up, walks up to Cleo. And he's like, "You waiting on the number seven bus?" He was like, "Yeah." He was like, "I don't think she run that early." He was like, "I caught it at the same time yesterday." And then he was like, "Well, let me check for you." He was like, "No, nah, ain't no problem." He's like, "No." He was like, "Uh," he said, like, "I'll do anything to help out a, a feather leather neck." And then he was like, mm -hmm. and then he called and the bus was on time, whatever. And so then you go to the thing and Anthony and, them, Anthony and Jose, they make their move on the guards. So then bullets start flying and stuff. And then the cop starts shooting at Anthony and them and Cleo don't do nothing. Cleo's just standing there like he reaches right. out for him, but he does nothing. Then um, and so then Kirby starts shooting at him. Kirby take two to the shoulder, and then finally Skip comes up and blows this dude head out. Dude, the makeup in this movie for, for crazy. it to be 1995, crazy dude. Like it was insane. Yeah. They did a great job with that. And so they blow the cop head off, and Cleo didn't want to do it because he was a black cop. And but mm -hmm. at the same time, it's like, dude, <laughs> it's survival of the fittest when you when you're doing on robbery. And so then you trying to get this money. Oh yeah. And so then Anthony doing his thing and run up on the one cop because the truck pulls off. And then Jose jump on the back of the truck. Anthony is sitting there about to get shot. Then he beat the shit. Uh, then he beat the Shoot out of that dude with that damn gun. And then mm -hmm. Jose, Jose whole job was to blow the doors off. Yeah. Not to blow the whole fucking truck up. <laughs> this Burn fucking no Hey, hey, Skip. <laughs> Skip walked mm -hmm. up on him mm -hmm. and like the truck blew up. And he was like, he's like, man, what the hell are you doing? He was like, man, did you see that shit? He was like, man, you blew the whole motherfucking truck up. <laughs> <laughs> and then they sitting there arguing and then Kirby comes up man we gotta take some of the money before all of it burns and so then they grab the money and then the, the Kirby car it got messed up because he had to put it in front of the truck to stop the truck so these mothers running down the damn street <laughs> and then broad daylight running down the fucking street with bags of money with their damn face painted and then but yep. before that happened while 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 they was on um, before right before the truck blew up, the cops had to drop. Well, the security guards had to drop on Anthony, and the mm -hmm. busted out the damn uh, trash can. And dude, I'm sorry. I, I I love her character. She go for what she want, but dude, how in the hell did she have two guns? 
shooting at one guy and not one damn shot hit that motherfucker. Like, he didn't hit shit. She didn't, he didn't hit, hit shit. shit. Anthony asked her, do you know how to work these, Man. these firearms? She said yes. Man, she ain't hit a, a, a damn soul. And that cop gave right. her like three or four to the chest. That's the man, easy. That's the that's the exact example of when you go to when you go to a job and they ask you how long have you been doing this type of work and you tell them 10 years and then you get the job and don't know what the fuck you're doing. <laughs> that's that right there. <laughs> That's exactly it's what that. that was. I hate, I hate that she died. I hate that she died, but God. And then damn, she died man. in like, the trash can, though. That's the crazy part. She died in the dump. <laughs> well, he pulled out the dump. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, that, that's that's the not bullshit. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> she died in the goddamn dumpster, man. Oh, man. And so then that actually happened. So they, they, they go, they put the money, they run down the street. Jose was the first person. He goes down the alleyway. Now, this motherfucker's running, shooting while he's running, catching a damn cop in the neck. Now, she's standing yeah. in the trash can, shooting. You know what I'm saying? It On stable ground. She can't hit shit. This motherfucker's running, shooting behind him, and hit a cop dead in the Ooh. neck. But then they end up crashing into him. So he dies. And then the second Best intro. Well, actually, this is number one. The number one intro of all songs in the world. Walk on by, kick song, and they showing all that money that they got. Mm. And um, so they're sitting there looking at the money, and they're discussing it. And um, and Skip's looking at it. He was like, "Man, they was gonna burn all this shit, like all this shit." And the motherfucker can't get a job. And then um, <laughs> <laughs> and then Cleo. And Cleo, like, man, he's like, he said, uh, <laughs> and he was like, man, well, well, Skip asked him, man, why you need to do something about the cop? He's like, man, you shot him, young brother. Mm -hmm. He's like, you just shot him. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, man, you know, I had to do my job. And then he was like, uh, he said, uh, I don't know if the Lord's going to forgive me for this one. It's like I promised him I wouldn't sin like this again. He's like, I'm not even sure if I want this any of this money. And then Kirby, like, yo, he's like, I'll find out something better to do with Joe Hell like, yeah, Kirby was like, shit, nigga, you ain't got to have nothing. And then he, he was like, well, I'll take the money. He's like, man, make up your damn mind. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then he told, and then um Anthony, he shook up about Delilah. He was like, man, we ain't do shit right out there. He was like, we ain't do nothing right. He was like, man, the whole plan went to shit. And he was like, make sure you hit, you know, Jose family, you know, with his cut or whatever. And Kirby mm -hmm. like, it's done. And then, then Skip got to talk about the money again. And then um, Cleo had said something to him. And uh, he said something. He was like, see, I told y'all I didn't want to work with no junkie. He was like, man, just look at him. <laughs> I'm fucking punch his ass in the fucking face. <laughs> he got him. <laughs> he got him fixed with his glasses. <laughs> this was so funny. <laughs> it was so funny, man, when he got up fixed with his damn glasses. Hey, man, that shit was hilarious. Listen, low key, like, low key, Bo Keen Woodbine, if he had a little bit more time on the screen, He'd have been the star of this goddamn movie, man. I'm he, telling was, you, he was the fucking man in this movie. He was, man. He he really he's really underrated, man. Really underappreciated. Mm -hmm. And uh and so then they was like, and then and then Anthony looked at him, man. We all start acting like some fucking clowns. And then Kirby was like, <laughs> <laughs> Kirby like, look, man, he's like, look, if y'all make me mess up my count again, he's like, I'm gonna shoot a motherfucker and then we're gonna be cutting this thing forward. <laughs> and so then <laughs> so then Anthony and Skip, they're going, they, you know, handing out toys to the kids and shit like that. And then uh, we back to the pool hall again. Mm -hmm. And then, then we back to your boy, Cowboy, again. So Cowboy rolls up, you know what I'm saying? They, they playing pool again. And Cowboy, look, I know why Cowboy the way he is. He, he cutty. He's cutty. Yeah. Yeah, that's who he is. And, and, and he worked for Cuddy too. 
And he yeah, he works for Cuddy. Cuddy. And act just yeah. like him. Because then he go, yeah. they shooting pool. He was like, he was like, yeah, man. He was like, uh, he's like my boy Cuddy. He's like one of the best. I mean, he said the, the, I forgot what he called him. One of the hardest men in Harlem or some shit like that. He was like, yeah, because Anthony looked up. He's like, yeah, I thought that'd ring a bell. And then he was like, yeah, man. He's like, man, Cuddy used to tap that ass while you was over in Numb. And boy, uh, Anthony, man, boy. He beat the shit out of Cowboy. Man, he beat the dog shit out of Cowboy. Mm-hmm. Whooped his ass, boy. And it was so funny when they, because <laughs> cause, uh, Jose and Kirby let him beat him up a little bit. But then he was like, all right, Cowboy about to die. It's time to no, pull him off. Jose was, <laughs> and then they no, pulled no, him Jose off. Was about to stop him. He's still holding the damn stick. <laughs> no, nah, Jose was about to stop him. And then Kirby held him back and started smiling. He said, nah, let him go. But, but yeah, man, he was, man, hey, he whooped the dog shot at that. Yeah, yeah. He gave him the business. But yeah, man, he whooped the dog shit out of him. And so then, um, so then they, Cuddy, and not Cuddy, not Cuddy, not Cuddy, I'm sorry. So Skip and uh, Kirby, Anthony talking, they're like, yo, like me, you heard about Cleo? And I say, man, Cleo acting a fool up in Mount Vernon. They say he got the past not hundred dollar bill saying that the good old Lord gave it to him. And so they're like, mm-hmm. man, well, we need to go down there and talk to him. Kirby said, man, fuck a talk. <laughs> so, <laughs> He's like, man, you better go and go. He's like, you better go handle it. He's like, oh, I'm gonna take him out. And so then Anthony goes up there to go talk to him, and they pulling him out. And then, like I say, like just even the way they was pulling him out, like he had his hands on his back, and like he was like kind of like skipping, and like he was sitting there shaking his head. Like I say, Bo King Woodbine did a really great job playing Cleon. And yeah. so then you know Cleon's talking, and they put the piece of paper down, and you see that he's. Putting names down, so everybody know they got to leave. But then they go to they go they go to Skip, and Skip's listening to one of the baddest men to come out well to be doing music in the seventies. He's sitting up watching uh, Soul Train, sitting up watching Soul Train, and uh, Al Green's on there. And then Al Green get the plan yep. uh, out of being alone. Police bust in, Skip on the couch. Needle in the arm, so he pretty much took his way out because he was like, I'd rather kill myself than to go to jail. Nah, he so didn't, he didn't kill himself, go he to... overdosed. Man, I think he killed himself, man. He look, think about it, think about it. He didn't have the thing wrapped around his arm. Nah, he, I think he did oh, that intentionally. Damn, you might be right, I ain't even think about that. Yeah, because you know, usually they tie the thing around their arm, yeah, and then they, they shoot take it out and take. Damn, I didn't he even did. think about that. Yeah, man, no, he, he killed himself because they knew Cleon gave them up. And Skip yeah, was like, I'm not going to try to run. Like, I'm not going to be able to outrun this. So then they go to Kirby and um, they go to Kirby and Anthony and they packing up at the pool hall. And then they um they getting ready to walk out. He was like, well, maybe I could send for Sarah. You know, he was like, yeah, you know, anything's possible. So they starting to go, and then the cops coming down the front way. Curtis tried, uh, Anthony tried to run through the back, that corner. Yeah. So then, then we get the quick cameo of Martin Sheen at the end. Like, this motherfucker came oh, out yeah. of nowhere. And, um. He's a judge. So, yeah, he's a judge. So Anthony's sitting there, and his lawyer's sitting there, and they asked Anthony, like, do you got anything that you want to say to the court, you know, before we sentence you? And so Anthony's like, you know, uh, it was like, I didn't mean for anybody to get hurt. You know, he um, was like, I was just going through a rough time. And, you know, I just had to do what I had to do, you know, to get some money or whatever, whatnot. And so then his lawyer tried to pull the move he thought was going to help. That mm-hmm. shit didn't help at all. Yeah, <laughs> the lawyer was like, man. No, it was like, hey, you know, he served in the uh, military. He served in a special unit, and in the Vietnam War, he earned a uh, silver star and all this type of stuff. And he was like, but before you continue, he was like, I was in the uh, 
Korea War. He said a real mm-hmm. war, I might add. And he was like, uh, he was like, he forgotten the things that the uh, that the army teaches you, dignity, honor, and all that type stuff. He was like, I'm not gonna let you use the uh, uh, the Vietnam War as a cop out. And Anthony put the meme mug on. He was like, you know, I sentenced you to 15 to life. And he was like, life? I'm like, man, what the fuck you mean, life? Oh, that's <laughs> like, the shit so I did sad. for this country, I'm going to pick up that chair and threw that Martin Sheen ass. <laughs> <laughs> but he passed out, boy. Yeah, he then we revisit the damn walk on by joint. But, like, man, this movie was, it was so great. There, there was so much in it. And, I mean, we pretty much went through it, you know, all the way through, and it, it's just mm-hmm. like I can envision it. Like while I'm talking about it, I could just envision it. like the Hughes brothers, man. Those two dudes, um, yeah. Albert and Alan Hughes, they put together like, dude, they did, they did everything. Like they, they got the writing credits. Um, the mm-hmm. only other person that um, got added to the uh, writing credit is uh, Michael Henry Brown, and Michael Henry Brown also did the screenplay. But, but like they did. They came up with the story, man. They like they're great, man. Like like they did uh, Menace to Society, yep. and look, they used Lorenz Tate again, you know. So they got mm-hmm. a relationship with Lorenz Tate, and I just felt like this movie was. It, it, I mean, it, it's just all time film, like I say, but it's one of those films, man. Like the impact that it has is is more than the actual of what it like because I don't think this movie won any awards obviously it didn't make a whole right. bunch of money it, it didn't profit a lot but I think what it did for people like Lorenz Tate um Clifton Powell like he just everything he plays in like he, he's never really the main guy but yeah. like everything that he playing in you, you always remember him he's like Loretta Devine like Mm-hmm. She's never the main person, but mm-hmm. you always remember her. And like Keith David the is the same. Keith, way. Keith David is the same way, man. Everything that Keith David is in, he he always stands out, no matter what what role it is. You know what I'm saying? Like who he's playing, how much screen time he get. It's just he. It's between him, Clifton Powell, man. Like they really, and especially Clifton Powell, because he had that short, short role, and. For him he was to, a, he was a minute to society too. Yeah, he was a hater. Again. Oh yeah. Again. <laughs> matter of fact, matter of fact, every time he in the hood classic, he the hater. He was he was pinky and Friday. He was a hate. He was a hating ass nigga then. Yep, that's you right. Know what I'm but but he plays a he plays a um he 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 plays a very very small part in this movie, but somehow he finds a way to make it stand out. He finds a way to make you remember his character. Same thing with Keith David. Like, the fact that, I keep wanting to call him Keith Washington, but Keith David, like, the same the same way that, you know what I'm saying, he played Kirby. Even though Kirby was one of the main characters in the movie, though, like, Kirby's character stood out amongst all the rest of the characters. Dude, you want to know what I love Keith David in the most, though? What's that? Out of out of everything he's been in, Gargoyles, my guy. He was the voice I of Goliath. The, yeah, I forgot about that. Man, that was my favorite damn show coming up as a kid. So yeah. I've always heard Keith David's voice. So like I grew, I basically grew up listening to Keith David's voice because like yeah. I used to watch Gargoyles every morning before I went to school. But um. But yeah, and then Friday, Freddy Rodriguez, he turned out to be, I mean, this dude, I mean, he, he's right, he's doing movies and shit now. So mm-hmm. he blew up for real. And we all know what happened to Chris Tucker. Like, you know, because yeah. I think that because this came out, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this came out now. So this, he did Friday and Dead Presidents. It had to be around the same time because Friday Definitely. came out in 95. Yep. But so I mean, it just, it, it just got to show you, man, just like, like you said, how it, it helped a lot of their careers. Like, this is one of the things that helped a lot of their careers take off. Like, I mean, well, not necessarily Keith David and Clifton Powell or Jennifer Lewis, because you know what I'm saying? They a lot older and they have been in the game for a minute. But like for Lorenz Tate, 
this is one of those things that he can, you know, saying so you can look back on his resume and you can see his, you know, say him doing a great job. Chris Tucker, another one. Um, Bokeem Woodbine, another one. Even though Bokeem Woodbine had been in a lot of stuff, this was one of the things that just really showed his range in this. I, I feel like he really showed his range in this movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, man. It, it was a great fan. Terrence Howard. <clears throat> yeah, Terrence Howard. I could see him yeah. playing Cowboy. Um, yeah. But, man, obviously, I mean. Well, you look, mean you got to say, you gotta say uh, he played – he played Cowboy slash DJ. Yeah, yeah. With a, <laughs> I, I wish I could remember. Uh, oh man, what was his name? And uh, get rich or die trying. It was a uh, damn. I can't remember what it was. But um, but yeah, man. I ain't even gonna hold you, man. Five fire flame. I ain't, I ain't even gonna hold you. Like you go to five. I man, yeah, man. Like. The cast, it like, this movie gives, like, just, just like I said last week, not last week, but last episode, in different categories, this movie gives me everything that I want in a movie. Uh -huh. It gives uh -huh. me the drama. It gives me the the suspense. It gives me the war part. I, I, I am, I'm a huge, I don't know why it do, I think that people are just fascinated with things that they're fascinated with, and I'm uh -huh. fascinated with the, uh, with the Vietnam War. I've seen tons of documentaries on it. I've seen tons of movies on it. Mm -hmm. I'm just fascinated with the Vietnam War. It gives me the Vietnam War. It gives me the revolutionary stuff in it. Mm -hmm. It gives you like it, it gives you so much stuff to where, like I say, it, it's one of those movies where, like I said, it's it's a it's a B-side movie. Yeah. But at the same time, the impact that it has. That's just like a movie like South Central. Is South Central is it shot the best? No. Is it one of the best movies? No. But but it's a impact. classic. Yes, it's a classic it's, though. It's a, it's a it's a straight out classic and the impact of it, just like Menace of Society, it's just something different about it. And yeah. what makes what makes Dead President different from like South Central and Menace of Society and stuff like that, what makes it different is that war element. Mm -hmm. like it don't that stuff don't give you that type of stuff and. I ain't even gonna hold you, man. Five fire flame, man. I, I, I don't. I, there's nothing that I would have personally changed about this movie. I'm gonna have to agree with you, man. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go five fire flames as well, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? The the fact that it showed the point of view of you know what I'm saying, a young African American male, once again in the time around the late '60s, early '70s. You know what I'm saying? Showing the the different aspects of what's going on around him and in his community. Like you said, they they showed a little bit about the Black Revolution slash Black Panthers. They showed, you know what I'm saying, the fact that people was going to war to make a better way for themselves, but at the same time, not knowing that going to war would be a detriment to some of their lives. Um, showing what was going, showing what was, or portraying what was kind of going on in the war at the time. And then having, you know what I'm saying, having that same portrayal of coming back after the war and having to deal with all the shit that they had to deal with you know what I'm saying, after they basically put their life on the line for the country, <clears throat> not having that same, you know what I'm saying, reciprocation given back to them. So, you know, I, I just feel like the cast, the story, the directing, the way it was shot, like you said, even the makeup and the, and the effects of the movie, I mean, to me, yeah, five, 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 five. And then, and then like, like I said before, like, dude, soundtrack like yeah soundtrack was crazy like the second song walk on by ozzy hayes third song the um the payback james brown i'll be around the spinners man you got mm -hmm. i missed you by helvin <clears throat> by uh uh harold melvin in the blue notes yep. you got the dream you got the dramatics man curtis mayfield aretha franklin al green the oj's come on man yeah that soundtrack Classic. Fire, man. Well, I mean, you. I mean, fire. You can't really go wrong. You can't really go wrong when you go from that 60, 70 era and pick out the R and B joints. Like, it really ain't too many bad songs from that era, man. Especially not R and B joints. Like, they're oh, still, yeah. they're oh, still yeah. hits sure. that's being played for today. Sure. Yeah, yeah, and they, and they ring off every time. Like I said, walk on mm -hmm. by in the look of love like 
just listen to the first minute or something. There's no words. All it is is a beat. Fire. Like, fire. Just fire, man. Yeah. Yeah. But yo, this next episode though, hey, we hitting the people with another trilogy, man. Oh yeah, man. So this trilogy here, man, is um at the time two, well, one of the biggest movie stars. This kind of put him in that, in that, you know what I'm saying, in that category. Um box office hits, you know what I'm saying, comedy, um action. Just man, like what what more could you want in the film to where not only is it not only is it a, a major film for, for us as black people, but this was a film that America loved. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know if the people are ready for this one. Hey, well, Brett, whether they ready or not, it's coming <laughs> to you. And it's come it's coming full in effect. Man, like I said, it's a trilogy, so it's gonna be three movies. Um and I, I guess we'll pretty much you know, do the same format we did the last time when we did uh, uh, the Dark Knight trilogy, um, you know, going back and forth in between yeah. all three of these films. Um, there, and there's a lot of side stories on the side that we can get to just as much. Yeah. And so this 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 one, man, it's, it's, it's really going to be a treat. I'm, I'm excited to do it because and, we... And I got a beef with the last film, too, so this is going to be good. I, that's the crazy part. That is the crazy part because... Uh, no, I, I won't say that. I won't say that, but that's the crazy part because we, we discussed that film before. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I loved it when I first seen it. I loved it when I first seen it, but that's that, that rewatch? Nah, man. Nah, man. That's gonna got, be you got some discussion to do. They got some explaining to do, Lucy. Oh, well, there's still some some explaining to do. Like, as much as I, I like that there's still some stuff that's missing that I oh, want no, to Oh, no, I mean, yeah, as far as the story goes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, of course. Like, yeah, they, they, but, they, but, hey, stay tuned in, man. Like, these things that coming to you, um, it's 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 gonna be it's gonna be wild, man. But it's gonna be really interesting doing this, and we're gonna have some more. And I I we're gonna have some fun times because, like you said, there's some comedic stuff to go along with it. Um, mm -hmm. You you said like I, I would say one of the people is like put it this way: one of them is box box office, and the other one is box office. I would give I would give them that because they had a little run too. Yeah, of yeah. some stuff that they did. Yeah, that ended up, that ended up. You know what I'm saying? Doing, doing some things, doing some things. So, oh yeah, this this next one, man. Like, like we coming, we coming with the heat, man. One hundred percent, man. So, um, you know, what I'm saying you guys can check me out, man, on Twitter at Scoots Bronte. You can check me out on Instagram, Scoots Bronte underscore TV. Check me out on YouTube, Scoots Bronte TV. Um, you can check out my uh, sports show, Isolated Society, every Thursday at 9 o'clock um, on Spreaker.com slash Isolated Society. And be sure to check out my other podcast, 15 Minutes of Fame. Make sure y'all go to that VA Pod Watch Group. Please go to the VA Pod Watch Group. Add yourself in there. We're trying to get it up to 100 people. That way we can start doing the um, – the watch parties and everything with the you know some of the people that listen. That way, you know, so you guys can uh, you guys can kind of see the movies that we're watching. Um, you guys will be able to hit us up and tell us what movies you think we should watch and everything else. So, and um, I'll be sure to sort of rate and review many reviews on the podcast. The last one we did was from the one listeners, Art Grown. Salute to him. So, you know, saying the more y'all leave, the more we're going to read, man. Yes, sir. Uh, you can check me out on the Stolen Time podcast page on Facebook, Stolen Time Pod on Instagram. Uh, me and Uncle Washington just put out an episode the other day. Uh, we got back to our sports shit, but also the, the took a twist at the end of some things that I just that needed spoken about. So go check out uh, episode 188 of that. 
Um, also, uh, S.Foster Foster on Instagram and Twitter. Also, check out the 28 Minutes or Less podcast. It's on all major platforms. Like I said earlier, um, we did the episode O, so go check that out. And uh, I mean, that, that's yeah, that's pretty much all I got to plug, man. And just keep tuning in. You know, rate, subscribe, all that good stuff, man. Leave a comment. Yes, sir, man. Um, thank y'all for listening, man. We appreciate y'all. You know what I'm saying? Keep listening. Make sure y'all share with a friend. Um, spread the news that the Viewers Anonymous podcast is out, man. Um, you know, you never know, man. You might be helping put somebody on. We appreciate y'all, man. So with that being said, y'all already know, like you said, Hollywood, man, that's a wrap. Cut. <laughs>